Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeff Wickens. I'm the sales manager for JPL Systems. And today I'm happy to uh, introduce you to Nick Marnoff. Um, Nick is very experienced um, sales um, presenter with Flexum. And today we're focusing on applications in hospital applications. There's a lot of critical uh, gases and applications. And uh, we're just going to go over the technology and how Flexum can be um, a great resource here to address these applications. And with that, I'll turn it over to Nick Martinoff. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining me. We're just going to go through uh, talk about some principle of operations, um, uh, some of the features and benefits of this technology, uh, the product packages that we have to offer, and then go through some sample applications which are quite relevant to uh, hospitals. So let's just jump into this. So very quickly, the principle of operation of a transit time ultrasonic flow meter. Uh, we all know how uh, differential pressure or uh, a mag meter works. This one is a little bit different. So what we have is uh, two sets of transdu or two transducers mounted on a pipe. A transducer is a thing that has a uh, piezo crystal built into it. Piezo crystal can emit ultrasonic energy and it can receive ultrasonic energy when it's hit with a sonic impulse. So the first sensor sends a signal that goes through the pipe wall, through the liquid. It actually bounces off of the back of the pipe and goes through the liquid again and is received by the receiving transducer. The time of flight is then recorded for that travel. Um, the receiving sensor sends a signal in the opposing direction. It travels along the same path, gets received by the first transducer, and the time of flight is once again recorded. Now, just like swimming upstream and downstream a river, the signal that went with the flow is going to travel slightly faster than the one that had to fight the flow and go upstream. This all happens incredibly quickly, up to a thousand times a second. Um, and then you take the data uh, and then flow meter comes up with a flow velocity because the greater the flow velocity, the greater the transit time difference between the downstream and the upstream. Flow velocity is multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the pipe and that gives you volumetric flow. And that's it in principle. Um, none of this requires any process interruption um, or cutting into the pipe. We literally clamp these sensors onto the surface of the pipe. Now, the temperature range for this setup is from minus 40, which is not so relevant, up to 450. So that means we can do your hot water, heating hot water applications. And we can do this from very small diameter pipes of something like quarter inch up to enormous pipe sizes. Somewhere in there is a range relevant to hospitals, let's say from one inch to, I don't know, 18 inches. So some of the advantage of this technology is, of course, the fact that it's not in contact with the, with the medium of the process. That means that if it's an ultra pure product, um, it's not getting it dirty, it's not in the way. Um, you also don't need to cut the pipe, of course, but it's hygienic and contamination free, which is quite critical in the hospital sphere. No certifications and, and which means less paperwork. So a lot of things that go into ultra pure uh, processes like um, medical, medical air, for instance, uh, anything that goes in the process requires all kinds of certification. Another big deal is the fact that it's uh, it's able to capture very low flows. So under high load conditions, let's say it's air or let's say it's chilled water or hot water, you have very high flows. But flow meters tend to struggle when the flow goes low. Um, and so this flow meter is able to measure low flow uh, unlike any other device on the, uh, on the market today. And that means you're capturing every single gallon or BTU or cubic uh, cubic foot of air. High dynamic measurement range basically means it's capable of measuring from very fl uh, low flow to very high flow, which is extremely important. And it is a calibrated device that comes with a NIST traceable calibration certificate, which is quite important. One of the big topics when you talk about flow meters is a uh, straight run. And the reason is because you have existing pipes that are somewhere down there in the basement. Let's say it's a cobweb of pipes and a flow meter needs a fully developed flow profile, which means a certain amount of straight run of pipe in order to be accurate. Uh, Flexum has resolved this issue so that you don't have to modify your piping by introducing, uh, introducing a uh, disturbance correction feature. And basically when you set the meter up, you program in the type of disturbance that is uh, upstream. So let's say it's an elbow or two elbows. 
and then you type in the distance from said disturbance to the sensors mounted on the pipe, and the meter uploads a K factor from an internal matrix that will correct the flow back to um, the accurate flow rate. And this works down to two diameters and allows you to be totally flexible with your existing uh, piping conditions. So this is an example, um, yet another example of a slightly uh, different technology within our meter. But nonetheless, this is a situation at a hospital where we have a 20 inch chilled water return line that's going into the chiller plant. And the only place we had to mount the flow meter was uh, in this where you see it in the picture on the bottom left. And as you see, there's an elbow, it's a 20 inch pipe, and there's only about um, three diameters of straight run available after this elbow. And uh, it's just 45 degree water, it's nothing special. So we installed the BTU meter on this line. So there's flow and temperature, supply temperature return and um, used surface mount non-intrusive RTDs for the temperature measurement. So we never had to punch any holes in the pipe. Um, but the net result, even though it's just a cobweb of pipes inside the plant, and this is all we had for straight run, was a very linear accurate flow rate. And you actually see the data from that flow meter um, and you see that we're using a two channel averaging system where one channel is affected one way, the other from from by the elbow, the other channel is uh, affected the opposite way. And you get a mathematical cancellation and a nice linear um, repeatable flow rate that's accurate. So bottom line is no straight run. It's OK. All of our sensors come with a NIST traceable calibration certificate. That means you can rest assured that uh, the flow meter is accurate when installed. This device is the only clamp on flow meter in the market that does not require a zero flow calibration. So install while process is running and this calibration is uh, live. The other thing is the only clamp on ultrasonic flow meter in the market that doesn't require any maintenance. So we're using a, a solid coupling pad to transfer the ultrasonic energy from the sensor to the pipe wall. Traditionally, that's um, uh, done via grease, uh, like a sonic coupling grease. The problem with the grease is it dries out, it washes away, it freezes away, it burns away, whatever the case may be. For us, this is not relevant because we're using a solid coupling pad made out of a material that is uh, chemically inert and can handle very high temperatures and basically last forever. It looks like rubber. It's definitely not rubber. But bottom line is we have meters installed on 350 degree chill, uh, hot water lines for close to 15 years and the meters are operating as new. They do not require maintenance. You insulate over the flow meter and forget about it. Very quickly, let's shift gears into product packaging. This is basically the actual physical equipment that you would receive. Um, we have a portable device, which is extremely useful, and every plant should have this. Um, it's available. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's always a dual channel meter, so you can actually measure two pipes at the same time if you want. It's available in a flow meter only or a flow and BTU meter. It's also available as a flow, um, liquid flow, BTU and gas. So if you wanted to do like compressed air measurements, oxygen, uh, all of this can be packaged into this portable device. Uh, it has process outputs, basically 4 to 20s, um, which allows you to switch it in for a failed existing meter that you have that may fail and you really need that flow meter. Uh, there's lead time issues or whatever. Take the portable out there, install it on the pipe and use the 4 to 20 in the portable to uh, output data plug it into the wall because the battery is good for 24 hours. Beyond that, you won't have it. So plug it into the wall with an extension cord and you're up and running. It has a data logger as well. So if you're using this for data collection or verification of existing meters, you can download the data logger into Excel later on using our software and you'll have the date, time stamped flow and total data, totalization data. Like I said, the battery is good for about 24 hours. Beyond that, you can just plug it in and run it for as long as you want. It's five, maybe 10 minutes of setup. Once you get good at it, you're talking about two, three minutes of setup. You're gonna spend more time removing insulation off of a pipe uh, to get to the actual physical metal pipe. The other device we have is uh, our permanent version, which is uh, the 721 transmitter. It's available in single or dual channel. Now, let me just stop here. A dual channel is often used in a situation where you're doing, let's say chilled water and hot water, and the pipes, all pipes are cl uh, close to each other. So this way you only need to purchase one transmitter mounted on the wall, run power to it, run communications, and then simply two sets of sensors. One is gonna go on the chilled water loop, one on the hot water loop. 
um, and then you have two separate uh, separate outputs or a single output like a Modbus or a BACnet that'll stream information from both channels. Uh, we have standard outputs like 4 to 20s and frequencies and, and pulses, um, but also Modbus and BACnet and other things. Um, it can for temperature, it can take in direct RTD. We supply those RTDs or you can use your own. Um, and we can also, in some cases, when it's necessary, we can take in 4 to 20. If it's a gas application where you have a uh, temperature or pressure input, we can take that in via 4 to 20. This also has a huge data logger. Um, the data logger is important because uh, these meters have a um, what we call advanced meter verification. So this is a uh, device, in this case, flow meter device validation uh, feature. So that means you can come up to the flow meter with a laptop, take down uh, the data logger using this feature, and it will create a report that you can file away that basically says the meter is healthy and accurate and um, you do doesn't need any other maintenance. So this is a, uh, if you have obligatory or uh, let's say, let's say uh, contractual or um, some kind of regulatory obligations to validate a meter, this makes it very simple. And we can do liquid gas or steam with these devices. For, let's say, lower value um, applications like domestic water, for instance, we have this 532 device. It's a smaller, compact, simpler unit, um, single channel only. It basically has the same kind of um, output uh, uh, can, capabilities. Available AC power, DC power for liquid applications. So domestic water lines will be like a half inch or three quarter inch copper line or something. Uh, in, the, in, in the modern world of, uh, of water shortages, so water becomes very important and tracking its usage is important. This device is perfect for those projects. So let's go through some something a little bit more fun, which is actual applications in a hospital. So we're going to go through just five of them very quickly. Chilled water, hot water, thermal energy or BTU metering. So submetering type application, a steam application, uh, domestic water, instrument compressed air, and then medical gases. So very quickly, a BTU meter is simply a device that measures the flow, the temperature on the supply line, and the temperature on the return line, and takes all those three to do a mass calculation and output BTU. Totally non-intrusive. You see a photo of our non-intrusive RTDs on the uh, top center there that goes under the insulation. Low mass, fast response RTD um, gives an extremely accurate delta T. So temperature differential between supply and return is very accurate and therefore um, is perfect for this application. Traceable accuracy on the flow, traceable accuracy on the temperature measurement, which is very important. I, I mentioned earlier a humongous turndown. Now, this is very real because there are times when your chilled water or hot water uh, flow is very low. If it's nighttime, if it's chilled water, maybe it's not very hot outside, you really don't need much. And the, uh, and the VFDs, the variable frequency drives, will go way down and the flow is quite low. This device will capture that. If your flow goes really high uh, because you have tons of demand, it's really hot outside, and um, it's middle of the day, lots of people in the hospital, and the AC is running hard, then you're going to have high flow. The meter will capture this with equal accuracy. Once again, I mentioned dual channel, um, so you can do it both on chilled water and hot water, and then the AMV feature. Just for a second, let me shift gears for the STEAM application. Uh, the STEAM application uses a different technology. I'll just go over it very quickly, um, just as an FYI, really. So what we do is we use the same kind of sensors mounted on the pipe, but instead of doing a transit time measurement, we set up two gates using two sets of sensors, and the upstream gate basically finds a distortion pattern in the signal that is the result of all of the eddies um, in the flow stream. And then it sends that pattern down to the downstream set of sensors, basically a second gate, and it says, look for this pattern. Once that downstream gate finds that pattern as it travels down the pipe, um, it, it notes the time that it took for this particular distortion pattern to go through gate A and then through gate B. The meter knows the distance between gate A and gate B and therefore can very quickly um, calculate the flow velocity in the pipe. After that, obviously, there's a calculation for uh, of density of, of steam to be for temperature and pressure to come out with mass flow of steam. 
this is an example of this flow meter being installed on an actual uh, hospital steam supply line. Um, as you see, it's a non-intrusive installation once again. There's a nice picture there in the uh, top center. We just have some mounting rails that are strapped to the surface of the pipe. After the installation, all the insulation went over this whole thing, so there is no steam energy escaping the pipe. Um, you're not losing any energy. Uh, and this device uh, has been operating for over a year now uh, and does not require any maintenance. It's located in this tunnel that you see on the right side. If these guys had to install an intrusive meter, you're talking about putting welders down there. You got to get permitting. You got to get air, uh, air to escape somehow because of the welding. Then you need to sh shut the hospital down because you can't operate without the steam. It just turns into uh, this massive, massive project with cost money and uh, incorporates a lot of people. I personally installed this flow meter. It took me about four hours to do it. I had to be careful and to go slow because of the hot pipe. But um, now they have flow rate, and this is an actual billing meter from the uh, plant, the steam plant, to the hospital. This is a cash register. Okay, next application we'll talk about is compressed air. Uh, so it, let's say instrument air in this particular situation uh, in hospital. There's a lot of air that's being used to run different machines and, and processes inside a hospital. Once again, totally non-intrusive. You can track the consumption of the compressed air. It use, takes a lot of energy, electricity to generate compressed air, which is why it's uh, um, expensive. And uh, leaking air, and uh, which is a big problem, can be tracked, but also just to track where your air is going throughout the hospital. It's not an expensive device. It's quite inexpensive. And so this is a good way to mount a bunch of them throughout the hospital to track where your air is going. Um, copper lines are quite common for instrument air, uh, sometimes steel, stainless tubing, and we can go down all the way down a half inch. Uh, not that that's very likely, but uh, we can go down to very small diameters for those applications. And the G721 compressed air package is quite uh, cost effective. Once again, huge turn down from very low air consumption to very high instrument con uh, consumption, uh, fluctuating consumption, it will capture all of it. So we installed about 1,500 of these units um, in the UK system during COVID because of the medical air consumption. So the medical air, it's exactly the same application in reality, except that you have this ultra pure air. And this is um, what became a big deal in the UK during COVID because of all the air use, being used for the ventilators. Um, they realized they need to figure out where it's going, where the loads are, where they need to add um, medical air production and things like that. So we fielded about 1,500 of these uh, systems throughout the UK during COVID in a very, very short period of time. And it was a, a godsend to their hospital system. Exact same um, package that we really use for this, but it's just a slightly different application. Um, like I said, domestic water applications, RO water, uh, we have uh, the portable device, we have the 532 device that can measure all of that. Once again, tracking the usage of your domestic water. I've done projects for domestic water tracking where it's all the way down to individual um, restrooms. So you have a large restroom in a, maybe it's in a hospital or maybe it's in a, um, a dormitory at a university. And so that water actually doesn't circulate. It actually goes into uh, a faucet. It goes in toilets. It goes into uh, showers. And there's a supply line to that room, that entire room. And they measure that uh, that water usage, hot water, um, sometimes both hot and cold. You can also set up uh, in your DCS, you can set up alarms for leaks so that water is not wasted. Um, we can do this all the way down to three eighths of an inch. Um, any pipe material, things like that. For temporary use, you can always use a portable. All right, so that's really it. Let me just go through to lighten this whole thing up a little bit, just to show you what Flexum does. These applications that I've told you about are well within our range or sort of what we consider really easy. But let me tell you what, we, what else we consider easy. Once again, this is just for fun. Um, anything from a quarter inch, we consider that an easy application. For most flow measurement uh, devices, measuring something so tiny is actually quite difficult. We go all the way up to 22 feet in diameter. 
To be honest, we could probably measure a larger pipe. We just haven't found a larger pipe yet. So in this picture, you see our portable device. You see that yellow, little yellow square in the ground with a couple of sensors attached to the pipe using magnets and they're measuring flow. Probably took them five minutes to set this up and they got a flow measurement on a 22 foot pipe. Um, acidic, uh, caustic, salts, corrosive, uh, abrasive media, we can measure. Doesn't really matter, we're on the outside of the pipe. Our device is not affected, there's no wear and tear. Very high pressure applications like this 20,000 PSI hydraulic press uh, leak detection system that we installed at a factory. Um, the sensors are just mounted on the outside of the pipe. Any other device you put into that pipe is going to cost a fortune and introduce extra leak points. Extremely low flow applications. There are chemical dosing applications that are barely, barely flowing. I'm talking about the equivalent flow rate of uh, drips growing on a faucet. This device is capable of capturing that. Um, and something real exotic for fun, a wood pipe that supposedly runs nitroglycerin, although I'm not actually convinced that that's what's going through there. But this is a 130-year-old pipe at a copper mine in Chile made out of wood, and we clamped on like it was any other pipe and measured the flow. So I only uh, talk about those just to kind of show you that we're capable of doing some really extreme things, and somewhere in the middle are common applications like what you see at hospitals, and we can do those. Uh, so quick review, quarter inch to 20 foot diameter range, hospital applications will be somewhere in the middle of that, uh, very low flow velocities to very high flow velocities, and also bidirectional. There are some applications where you have flow going in both directions, and this meter is completely bidirectional, and put a negative sign if the flow goes opposite where the arrow is pointed on the sensors. Temperature range overall, uh, from cryogenic to extremely hot, but for hospital applications, once again, sort of um, 30, 40 degrees Fahrenheit up to hot water or steam, which might be 400 or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, totally within our range. Liquid gas steam, we talked about that a lot. Um, there are some concentration and mass flow applications also uh, that we can do using non-intrusive solutions for binary solutions. So if you have um, a caustic or some kind of an acid, a chemical treatment process or something like that, maybe a bleach like a hypochlorite, and you need to track the concentration and we can do those. Now, of course, Flexum has been around uh, the United States for the last 17 years. Um, globally, it's been around for over 30 years. We've done a lot of work in a lot of hospitals here in the United States, East Coast, West Coast, um, Midwest, Texas, all that kind of thing. And we have references coming from all different hospitals, uh, large and small, uh, famous and infamous. So thanks for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can email us. Uh, I'm providing Jeff Jeff's contact information here. He's the sales manager for JPR Systems. JPR Systems, as he said, is the representative for California. Shoot your questions his way. If you have applications, let him know, and we will get a local person out to you to talk to you and uh, answer the questions, maybe do a live demo and things like that. Uh, but for now, I'm signing off. Thank you very much for your attention, and I uh, hope to speak to you soon.